Hello and welcome to Fishing Tutorials. Today's video is about method feeder fishing. This film is going to cover five topics which will help you get out there and catch loads of carp on the method. The method feeder is an inline feeder designed to hold ground bait or wetted pellet. The aim with the method is to use quite a short hook length to position your hook bait close to the pile of loose feed. This video is going to focus specifically on the flatbed method feeder as opposed to the larger bait up method feeders. We covered that style of fishing in a previous video which is more aimed towards specimen carp fishing. However, this is a more pleasure slash match style approach. Oh, that's all. First bite of the day on the method feeder, little common. Took a little bit longer than I was expecting. There's a lot of fish in this lake and uh, the bites took a little while to come, but we're off the mark. So why is the flatbed method feeder so effective? Well, there's a few reasons in my opinion, and one of them is that it's very low profile, sits tight to the lake bed, it's quite unobtrusive really. There's the other benefit that it creates once the ground bait or pellet is on there, a perfect little mound of loose feed. Very, very accurate, very tight to where your rig is. Also, combined with a short hook link of like two, three, maybe four inches, it enables you to have that hook bait really, really accurate amongst the loose feed. And most importantly, when a fish takes that bait, it doesn't have to move very far at all before it gets hooked. Uh, that short hook link definitely works to convert more uh, pickups into actual bites. The lake that I'm fishing at today is somewhere that I've never actually been to before. And the reason why I've reached for my method feeder kit is because the lake seems to have quite a large stock of carp. The water's quite coloured, which gives me the feeling that there's probably rather a lot of fish in here but I haven't seen them cruising around on the surface. If they were up in the water, I wouldn't be thinking about method feeder. I'd be thinking about putting out dog biscuits, bread on the surface, maybe fishing shallow with a pellet waggler. But because I haven't seen any carp cruising around, but I know there's, there's got to be quite a lot of them in here, I'm reaching for the flatbed method feeder. Before I get back to the fishing though, here is a step-by-step -step guide to creating your own method feeder rig, just like this one. To tie a method feeder rig, you'll need the following items. An inline method feeder. Today I'm using a 28 gram model, but they come in a range of other sizes to suit every fishing situation. A swivel. This comes supplied with the Guru inline feeders. Hook length monofilament. This is five pounds, but if the fish are really big, you can step this up to six, eight, or even 10 pounds. A strong hook. This is a size 12. Speed stops and a speed stop needle. Lastly, you'll also need some scissors. Pull the supplied swivel out of the method feeder. Then thread your main line through the feeder and tie it to the swivel. We like to use a half blood knot, but a Palomar or Uni will also suffice. Pull the swivel down until it locates neatly inside the feeder. Now take a length of your five pound monofilament this will be your hook length. Tie a speed stop onto the end of this line. I like to do this with an overhand loop knot, but a double overhand knot also works. Take your hook of choice and thread the line through the back of the eye. Set your hair length. We are using this length as we'll be hair rigging two bits of corn. Wrap the line around the hook shank, trapping the hair in place. We like to wrap it around approximately seven times. Pass the line back through the eye towards the point this time. Pull this down tight. We like to use a short hook length when method feeder fishing. Around three to five inches worked well for us. Now tie a figure of eight loop knot in the other end of your hook length. If you want help with any of the knots seen in this video, check out the knots playlist on our channel. This loop is then used to attach the hook length to the swivel. Pass the loop through the eye of the swivel and then pass the hook through the loop and tighten it down. This is the finished method feeder rig. This setup is a safe bolt rig, perfect for when you're fishing with two rods. However, to convert this into a running rig for better indication, switch the supplied swivel for a speed bead. 
This enables you to change hook links quickly and also results in a free running rig. Just mount a bait by pushing the speed stop onto the needle and threading on your bait. Pull the stop off of the needle and you're done. The third topic of this video is what can you put on a method feeder and how do you mix it up? So we have had success when method feeder fishing with breadcrumbs, uh, ground bait and wetted down pellet. Some people have used things like dog food, like Vitalin, uh, wetted down and wrapped around the feeder, but I definitely prefer when fishing the flatbed method to use small two mil pellets or a specific uh, method feeder ground bait. That's because you can get a really good consistency with these baits and it sticks to the feeder quite well. On this session, I'm using a fish meal ground bait. Ensure to check on the packaging that it says uh, designed for the use with a method feeder just because cage feeder ground baits and some pole fishing ground baits can be a lot drier and they don't ball together so well. For the method feeder, you need a ground bait that gets relatively sticky so it actually holds on to the feeder until it hits the water and begins dissolving. To mix up your method feeder ground bait, I'd recommend using a round bowl. Reason being is they don't have corners, so you don't get dry bits stuck in those corners. Uh, you get a more thorough, uh, even mix when you use a round bucket. Pour in your ground bait into your bucket. On this session, I'm probably gonna use about half a kilogram. It's likely that you won't need a full kilogram unless you're fishing for a long period of time or you're catching loads. Begin to add lake water a little bit at a time, stirring the mix thoroughly between adding the water. The last thing you want to do is just pour in, shed loads of water, then find that you've put too much in because you can't get it back out once it's in the mix. Keep adding water little and often whilst stirring until you've got a mix that binds together reasonably well. I'd actually say you want to over wet your ground bait just a little bit because it will begin to dry out and in around 10, 15, 20 minutes, it will be absolutely perfect. I wouldn't advise having a very dry mix, which doesn't quite pack together well enough because you'll be compressing it really hard to try and make it stick to the feeder. But at the same time, don't make it sloppy and stodgy because that will stick to your feeder and won't dissolve off on, once it goes in, into the water. You, you kind of got to get it in the middle where it's, it's just about sticks to the feeder nicely, but hits the water and begins to dissolve. Later on in your session, especially if it's a hot day, you'll notice the ground bait does start to dry out as the hours pass. You can just sprinkle a little bit of extra water on it to ensure that you keep the same consistency throughout the session and it continues to stick properly to your feeder. Now that you have your ground bait mixed, you can squeeze the bait onto your feeder by hand. Lay a pile of ground bait in your hand and then push the feeder into your palm and squeeze it down. You can then tuck your hook into the ball or you can leave it hanging exposed. That's entirely up to you. When fishing short range, squeezing the bait on with your hand is perfectly acceptable and works just fine. However, if you want to be fishing a little bit further out and you need to have you know, precise accuracy of your cast, it definitely helps if your feeder weighs the same each time and is perfectly symmetrical. The way to achieve this is to use a method feeder mold. Take your mold, lay your hook bait into the bottom of it. You can then sprinkle the bait on top of that, ensuring you get the same amount of bait each time you go and uh, make a cast. Then take your method feeder, push it into the mold nice and firmly, turn the mold upside down and just press on the back. The back is quite soft and it enables you just to pop the uh, feeder out of the mold. When you look at the finished feeder, you can see that it's the same size every time and it's precisely symmetrical each time too. So it makes the casting a lot more accurate. That feeder will fly straight in the air compared to a feeder which you have molded by hand. I wouldn't say you need to use a method mold for all of your method feeder fishing, but it definitely helps if you're trying to stay consistent with the amount of bait and the accuracy of your cast. Whether you have your hook bait tucked inside the method ball or hanging exposed is entirely up to you. However, we certainly like to have the hook bait tucked inside the method ball. First of all, because it guarantees that you're not going to get any tangles. If that hook link is neatly doubled over and the hook bait is positioned inside the ball of ground bait, you're definitely not going to tangle on the cast. And also, um, especially at times when you're getting lots of taps on the rod tip and the fish are quite ravenous, they're coming in and eating, the, eating up the ground bait, they're feeding on that method ball very accurately. Having the hook bait tucked inside just means you get much quicker bites because the hook bait is dead in amongst the loose feed. The 
fourth topic of this video is what tackles you use for method feeder fishing. I've got a 10 foot feeder rod, although you may like to use a 12 footer if you're casting at longer ranges. Today I'm casting about 30 yards and the 10 footer is absolutely perfect. Shorter rods tend to be more accurate at short ranges, but if you're on a lake where you've got to cast 50, 60, and maybe up to 100 yards or so, I'd definitely say get on a 12 foot uh, rod. The particular quiver tip that you use isn't super important, but I'd definitely say don't go too soft, only because you're casting a relatively heavy weight uh, repetitively through the day, and that's slightly easier on a little bit of a pokier rod. And at the end of the day, you're not watching that tip for very, very sensitive indications, so you don't need a super sensitive quiver tip. The line that's on the reel is eight pound, and the reason for going for eight rather than something like three, four, or five is simply because when method fe feeder fishing, your line takes quite a beating over a period of time. Regularly casting a relatively heavy weight and catching decent sized fish, you don't want to go too light uh, for your main line. Well, the... normally you'd be catching decent sized fish. <laughs> yeah, all right. Not today. Not today. Normally you're catching like decent sized carp on the method, but obviously today I'm catching rather small ones. But I'm going to try and catch something slightly bigger later on. Anyway, stop interrupting. I'm trying to show the guys what tackle to use for method feeder fishing. The line that I've got on the reel is eight pounds. It's a small fixed ball reel. The reel isn't too important really when method feeder fishing, as long as you've got the capacity uh, for a decent amount of eight pound line. As well as the rod and reel and line, uh, the other things that you must have on a method feeder session, uh, a method feeder fishing session, are uh, a bank stick. You need the bank stick and it's optimal it's optimal, sorry, if you position it at around 45 degrees to where your spot is. That means you can have your rod out to the side with a slight bend in it. Um, and if you don't have the rod rest, it, it's just a little bit hard to tighten up and hold the rod to, to, to the spot. So the bank stick with the rod rest on it just ensures that you can have your, your rod nice and still and you can see when you get a bite, you're not bumping the rod around all the time. Uh, other than that, I've got my pan net and a handle, and I'm sitting on a bucket. I used to sit on a seat box, but I, I ran out of money and sold it a few years ago. I haven't got another one, um, so that's that. It's time to recast, and the spot that I'm actually casting to is a overhanging bush on the far margin. The reason I chose to fish that spot is because it looks like a good fish holding area, and I saw a fish jump early on in the session. When you're method feeder fishing, it's quite common for people just to see an island and just go, I'll just chuck to the island because it's something to chuck to. Um, islands are a very good area to, to sort of hold fish, but it's also worth considering your near margins. My margins seem a little bit shallow, so I kind of ignored them to be honest. Um, but it's also worth considering casting two sets of lily pads, maybe on the edge of a weed bed or something. Uh, but yeah, today I've got an overhanging tree which I'm aiming at today and there's definitely a few fish hanging around it. The reason for picking a specific spot as opposed to just saying, oh, I'll fish towards those pads or I'll fish towards that open water is because you really want to try and be accurate when you're method feeder fishing. The feeder by its nature delivers a small parcel of bait each time you recast. So if you're dropping one you know in one area of your swim and then you're dropping another cast in another area you're not really building up a bed of bait in any spe specific place but if you hit that same spot every time you cast to that same area you're beginning to build up uh, an area of bait a patch of bait and bring more fish into your swim to actually get to that same spot each time you'll notice when i make this cast that i've lined up with the far bank marker uh, so that it goes in the same direction every time, but also just then it hit the clip. I've put the line in the clip because that means the same amount of line comes off the spool each time and it drops down into the water in exactly the same spot every cast. When you're fishing the clip, you'll notice I hit the clip with the rod up quite high. I'll make the cast, bring the rod back almost behind me and hit the clip back there. That's because First of all, it softens the uh, it softens the blow when when it hits the clip. So you're not going to break your line, or you're not going to um, you know snap it, snap anything. So you sort of you, you, you cushion you cushion the hitting of the clip like that. But also because when you oh I'm in already. <laughs> also because when you hit the clip with the um, with the rod up high like that, it gives you the ability to then drop your rod down. And as you drop your rod down onto the rest, you put a couple of uh, turns on the reel. 
putting those couple of turns on the reel really helps uh, because if you get a savage bite and it starts ripping, you have a little bit of time to uh, quickly unclip the line uh, and let the fish run if it, if it is trying to run um, away from you. I'd say most of the time when you're method feeder fishing, you don't need to worry about that clip. Most of the bites just bend round and you can begin to play it like the one I am playing now. Uh, but on the odd occasion, yeah, you'll get a, a whacking great bite that will be stripping line. And by having just a couple of turns on the handle, it will give you that, uh, that bit of time just to lean forward, take the line out the clip and let the fish keep running if it is a big one. Just playing this one in now. The bites are getting quicker and quicker as the day goes on. Earlier on it was really tough. I wasn't getting many bites at all, but now the swim has uh, built up. There's a number of fish out there and I'm getting consistent bites. To be honest, not a lot of people fish down at this pond and I think they are quite rarely caught fish and they really go for it. There we go, got him, got him. Oh, that's lovely that. He's a bit better. Beautiful carp caught on the method feeder. Another bite on the method feeder. Immaculate little common. So it's obviously important to keep casting back to the same area, building the swim and keeping the bait going in on the same spot. But once the rod is actually down on your rod rest and you're tightening up the line, you want to be careful not to drag that feeder across the bottom because you don't want to spread the bait all over the place. So make the cast, hits the deck and put a slight bend in the rod. There we go, <laughs> fish on already. Um, yeah, once the rod's down on the rest, you want to put an ever so slight bend in the rod tip. You want that small bend just so that you can see if a fish picks up the bait and comes back towards you, it will spring back straight. And uh, if a fish picks up the bait and swims away from you, it will bend round and you'll know when to strike because the bites are pretty strong sometimes. Ah, oh, I've just lost it. You can't land them all. I'm gonna get loaded back up and cast this one back in. When are you planning on landing your next fish? I'm hoping I land the next one, Alex. I don't know how you would have done. Probably if you were fishing today, you would have had about 100 fish and they all would have been 20 pounds. What do you think of the method feeder, Alex? I think it's a great method for Fishing. <laughs> Great. How many times? It, okay, quiz, competition. We're going to give away a free fishing rod, this one. <laughs> if you comment below the number of times we said method in this video. Oh, God. That's a joke, by the way. I like this rod. It's mine. <laughs> Not giving it away. We do do competitions on our Instagram account, though. At Carl and Alex, sometimes. Little giveaways. What a giant to end the day on. All right, might not be massive, but I've had a really good day catching plenty of carp. In fact, I say day, I think I've probably only been fishing for a couple of hours and I've had about 10 or 15 carp. Anyway, be sure to check out our channel and subscribe for plenty more how to fish videos. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.